Tommy, a build-it project. What are you thinking? Well, remember that wine cabinet that we built out of that old beam that I salvaged off a job? I do. That thing was awesome. <laughs> right. Well, here's some scrap wood that I saved from those pieces that we made. Right. And I love to save old scraps of wood because you never know what you're going to do with it. White pine, if I recall? Right. White pine. And it's uh, old growth, so it's nice and tight. And you think of pine as being soft wood. And this is soft, but because that grain's so tight, it's relatively strong. All right, well, there's not much left here, Tommy, just scraps. What are you thinking of making with this? <laughs> We're not going to build a big project. We're going to build a couple of salad utensils, a spoon and a fork. Hmm. I actually traced these this morning before I left the house of a couple of utensils that I have. And we're going to do it all by hand, no power tools. No power tools. So not even uh, get a bandsaw in there, just at least rough out the basic shape? No, we've got a bandsaw, but let's do it the old-fashioned way. Let's take our hand tools, see how we want to make our cuts, shave it, plane it, pull it, rasp it, yeah, right. carve it, whatever it takes. Well, definitely more accessible if you don't bring the power tools. I mean, I don't even have a bandsaw, so. Yeah, a lot of people don't. And it's a great weekend project that you can do with your kids. All right. How do you want to start? All right, we're going to get started by taking one of these utensils and find a piece of wood that it fits on. You want to look it over, make sure we don't have any knots in it. And we'll just trace it out. And when you're tracing it, you don't have to be real fussy because we're going to fine tune it and modify it as needed with our tools. All right, so that looks good. I think we're ready to start cutting. We'll make a rough cut on our length and maybe a couple of kerf cuts to relieve it as we cut the curve with the coping saw. Now most hand saws cut on the down motion. We're going to use a pull saw, which means all the cuts are made when you pull it towards you. You can see they have two different teeth. One has a large one, that's for ripping, and the other side is a small one, that's for cross-cutting. All right, we're making a series of relief cuts almost down to the line, so when we cut on the line, those pieces will fall off. All right, so now we're going to make a rough thickness cut. Okay, now we've got our spoon cut, roughly. All right, so you're good there? Yep. All right, so I'm going to reset mine in the vise, and I'm going to cut the curve of the spoon out with my coping saw. A coping saw is good for cutting curves because it has a thin, flexible blade. All right, now we're going to start fine-tuning and shaping our spoon. We're going to use whatever it takes to make it happen. We're going to use some rough-cutting rasp, finer rasp, a plane, a spoke shave, and we'll just start forming it. A spoke shave was originally designed to make the spokes on wagon wheels. Now, a spoke shave is like a plane with a very short body on it, so you can make curves and radiuses with it, but there has two handles on each side to control it. What's the story with these rasps, Tommy? They look a little different. Yeah, they are a little different. They actually have carbide tips on them. They stay sharp for a long time, and they can be very aggressive. And just like any rasp, it allows you to cut the wood in any direction.
All right, we've got them pretty well roughed out right now, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp mine to the table. And to dish this out, I'm going to use my curved gouge, work my way in, and actually use this part of it. This, I'm going to call this the heel right here as a fulcrum to work it under the wood. I always want to go with the grain because if I go down too deep here and as I come up, I'll actually tear it out on this side. So I'm going to go down to my deepest point and then go back in from the other side. So I'm trying to work my way down into the lowest part of the dish here. And I want to work my way around so I'm cutting off the grain as I go down. A lot of people say, why wouldn't you just use a chisel for this? And a chisel wouldn't carve it or remove the wood right. So you need a curved gouge and you just work your way down in and smooth it out. Okay, our pieces are all roughed out. You can see these rough marks that are left here from the gouge and also from the rasp. We wanna get all of those out of here. So now it's time to start hand sanding. We're gonna use three different grits. We're gonna start off with an 80 grit. And we're gonna go up to a 120. And then we're gonna finish them off with a 240. All right, we're all sanded, so now we'll just wipe it down with a tack cloth to remove all the dust. Now that we have all our dust removed, we're ready to apply our finish, and we're gonna use a food grade of finish, and it's actually beeswax and mineral oil mixed together. We'll just apply it uh, with a rag. Now lots of times you can just use mineral oil on this and that's fine to protect it, but the beeswax adds a little bit of a sheen to it. Gives it a nice look. I like it, very subtle, but yep. just enough to make the grain pop. It does too, doesn't it? Okay, Tom. All right. There Not too bad for a couple pieces of scrap wood that were destined for the garbage. Yeah, and it was a lot of fun, I think. You know what? Very relaxing to make. I like working with hand tools. Nice. Good idea. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.